Well, the German policy on fostering renewables already started in the 1990s, so it has a long history now in uh, Germany. It really uh, speeded up in the beginning uh, of the 2000 years um, and now it uh, grew substantially, so it was really a policy uh, to uh, bring renewables now uh, into the electricity market. I think very successful uh, if you look at the sheer numbers, so uh, it provides uh, uh, quantitative, fixed, uh, long-term uh, uh, feedback, uh, feed-in tariff uh, for renewable policies and uh, that is uh, very good in terms of security of investments and thereby uh, initiated a lot of new installations in renewable capacities. If you look at the different renewables you saw that especially in the last two years you know, the numbers increased rapidly. So uh, for example, we, especially in the case of uh, onshore wind uh, and uh, photovoltaic, you have seen that new installations were really very large. Uh, so now uh, in Germany the total renewables have a share in the electricity sector uh, of more than 20% in the year 2011 and in the first half of 2012 even 25% uh, in Germany. So this is really substantial and especially the new installations in uh, solar were really amazing. Last year we had uh, new installations of 7 gigawatt uh, of uh, solar in Germany and this year we will see similar numbers. Uh, for 2012. Renewable technologies are costly. You know? So the average feed-in tariff that is paid in Germany at the moment is 19, 19 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's of course five times the uh, price or four times the price you find on the uh, wholesale market. So it's an expensive technology as it is today. Uh, that is reflected then as well in the feed-in tariff system. That means uh, consumers have to pay, pay uh, uh, an additional uh, what, we, what we call Umlage uh, on their prices. Uh, currently this amounts to 3.6 cent uh, for renewables. Uh, in general I think one has to mention that I mean the, gen the electricity price in Germany increased over the last years. It, it was not only the uh, increase in the cost of renewables that caused the increase in the electricity prices. We also saw many other influences also from governmental side, taxes uh, on electricity for example, the dis distribution charges, the, uh, the subsidization of combined heat and power, the value-added taxes which were all uh, contributing to the increase in electricity prices as well, generation costs increased and the margins and the sales side increased. So many different uh, drivers contributed to the increase in the prices. But of course, uh, the part of these price drivers. In the long run there's a problem of social acceptance because we know that uh, people in Germany actually like the idea of the energy when they're facing out of nuclear so they are I think fully behind this political goal. On the other hand this has to be balanced I think with uh, the uh, economic consequences of the policies so if uh, we implement um, inefficient policies, we waste money you know, uh, that we could use better otherwise and so therefore I mean if we want to have a sustainable energy energy vendor uh, we should especially look on the economic efficiency and try to uh, have least cost solutions and that's as well why we discuss about uh, how to uh, change the feed tariff system in order to make it long term uh, viable in the public acceptance of the journey. Yeah, there, there are different possibilities that uh, might be considered. You know? I mean, uh, we see that the, especially the increase in solar is dramatic. Um, so obviously the rents uh, on uh, solar uh, investments are still high. You know? And uh, I think uh, one possibility would be to, to try to slow down a bit the, these developments. Uh, the government has opted for a ceiling uh, on the uh, solar uh, subsidies but that will not help because what we think is that this ceiling is going to increase, accelerate actually, 
the new investments in solar in order to capture the good conditions, the good investment conditions that we have today. So what happens is actually the opposite of what we want. No? We want that the renewables uh, develop in line with the grids in Germany no? and uh, we don't want them to be faster and faster. Well, in 2050, the German government actually wants to decarbonize the electricity sector almost completely. So the target is 80 to 95 percent CO2 reduction uh, in the uh, mix, which means that uh, renewables at that time would really be the most important source of electricity in Germany. Um, that is not only then onshore wind and photovoltaic, uh, but it would be as well offshore wind, uh, which would be an important uh, source of renewable energy. That is something where the German government as well have has intermediate targets you know, for offshore wind developments that uh, span uh, also for the short uh, horizon until 2020. The overall contribution of renewables in 2020 uh, should reach 35% of electricity generation in Germany and most people are very confident that these targets are going to be reached until 2020. For many, many others to learn on different fields of the energy wende, but it's still too early you now uh, to give really a, a good example for others. We still have to do our homework, and I think there are many uh, areas where we still have to uh, improve. Uh, as I said, uh, this is not only covering the electricity sector, it's as well about the transport sector, it's about the housing sector, uh, where we as well have to improve in terms of the energy efficiency. Uh, we need new technologies and new policies to be implemented. So a little bit too early to, to draw conclusions, uh, but I think if the Germans are managing this uh, whole process good, uh, right, uh, and in a good way, in a good manner in the next years, so I think it will be an example for many to follow.